You know, when we think about the violence happening in our country, the numbers are just staggering. Since Sandy Hook, there have been 2,179 mass shootings with 2,459 people killed. And so what causes this violence? How can we prevent it? And really, how can we cope? Well, Trent Steidley is an assistant professor focusing on criminology and the sociology of law at the University of Denver and joins us to talk more about this. So thank you. Thank you, first and foremost, for being here. So I, I, why do these shootings keep happening? I know it's a, a big question. It's a, but it's a million dollar question. Yeah. Uh, the short answer is uh, there's not a single one thing that we can point at. Uh, advocates for trying to promote new gun laws would say that it's really wrapped up in firearm prevalence. And there's empirical evidence to suggest that is the case. The United States has more civilian-owned firearms than almost any other industrialized country. Um, advocates promoting gun rights would argue that it's uh, something wrapped up in culture, uh, video games, media. Um, there's less evidence to support that argument. Uh, the, long and short, the long and short of it is, though, is that the United States is unique. We are experiencing these more often than other countries. Um, other countries have similar struggles with trying to uh, address mental health problems. Uh, but the United States is unique in that we do have a lot of firearms. Uh, the research is complicated, though, in terms of trying to show that the prevalence of firearms is wrapped up in this because it's hard for uh, social scientists to get a measure of how many firearms are located in any one place at mm -hmm. one time. So the correlation between firearm prevalence and violence is a thing that criminologists, sociologists, public health scholars have been grappling with for sure. decades. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're all talking about it because I know your research is focused on social movements, politics mm -hmm. and criminal justice. So how how do those three things go right. together? A lot of what I've worked on has really focused on how did our gun laws get to the way they are now? And uh, one side of the argument is that the NRA has been a major lobby to try to pass these laws. One thing that I've been interested in trying to show is that it's much more focused on, it's a social movement dynamic of gun rights advocates care deeply about gun rights. True. And advocating for gun rights has been a thing that is bread and butter for them in terms of what they care about. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. So trying to understand how our gun laws got the way they are, it's not helpful, I think, to talk about it in terms of the NRA as a boogeyman, but as there are average Americans that care about this issue, they identify with it strongly. Gun ownership and gun rights for them has been something that they've done since they were children, they grew up with, and trying to frame it as a organization that's only out for gun manufacturers, or a, a big bad gun lobby really overlooks the fact that these gun laws have been promoted by average Americans who have lobbied and worked to try to get state laws to change over time to, to favor things that they care deeply about. Uh, well, clearly there's there's a whole bunch of law-abiding, right. gun-carrying um, people in the U.S., right. yet there's uh, that, that other aspect, that other unknown that, mm -hmm. what, that leads to domestic terrorism, I guess, is, right. Is, is what's happening. So how does that, how do you go from that point to that point? Right, and so trying to, I think this is where the discussion about gun violence gets really complicated because when we talk about gun violence, we put a bunch of different outcomes into the same bucket. We're talking about firearm suicide, we're talking about accidents, we're talking about terrorism, we're talking about regular violent crime, well, regular in terms of homicide, armed robbery, crimes that we would think of as more ordinary rather than terrorism. And Using that word loosely, but go ahead. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It, there's a hard way to talk about it. So thinking about it in those terms of uh, how do we get, how, when we talk about how do we address gun violence, it really is important to think about do we want to uh, focus on one specific type of violence or are we talking about all forms of violence? And I think terrorism is the one that right now has got everybody's attention, especially in the, after the events in El Paso. And I think that this is an important time to talk about how somebody can become radicalized or how somebody can go from uh, having extremist views, getting a gun, never having it pop up on law enforcement's radar, or if it does pop up on law enforcement's radar, why, did, why were they not able to do anything about it? But that, so, doesn't, that doesn't get us to a point of thinking about all other forms of gun violence as well, because the things that work to reduce terrorism may not necessarily be the things that reduce suicide, sure. which in terms of how many people suffer from it, Suicide is the number one cause of gun uh, deaths in the U.S., number one result of gun deaths in the U.S. With 30 seconds left, yeah. what can we do about that domestic terrorism piece that, that I think has so many people unsettled right yeah, now? Yeah, absolutely. I think having people, uh, 
if you see something, say something. This is a thing where if you are aware of somebody who is engaged in kind of extremist views or extremist rhetoric, taking actions, these are things that not only work for domestic terrorism, but can work for things like school shootings. There's plenty of evidence to suggest that the, uh, the friends who knew what was going on at Columbine may have been able to reach out to law enforcement. And now we're creating a culture of awareness sure. that people should share this information if they're concerned. Time to speak up. Yes. Trent Stidley, thank you so much for being here. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. All right, back in a moment.